Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening. Welcome to 2019. Praise the Lord. And welcome back to the Believers Institute. Is there anybody as excited as I am to be back at Believers Institute? All right. Well, old folks say you ought to show some sign. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. I'm Dr. Tony Irby. I'm the Senior Associate Pastor of Education. And uh, on behalf of our senior pastors who are here tonight, actually, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to the Believers Institute. We're coming to you here at Eagle Mountain International Church. We are in Fort Worth on the grounds of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, also known as, help me say it, the Revival capital of the world and I want to thank all you all for being here and I especially want to thank those of you who are watching on the Believers Voice of Victory Network for tuning in you might be at emic.org perhaps one of our other uh, media platforms however you're here some are listening by radio I believe however you're here we want you to know that we certainly count it in honor having you learning and growing with us on tonight like I said we're back and uh, Believers Institute is what we do on Wednesday nights. Am I right about it? We come together as a local church family around the Word of God, and uh, we certainly appreciate that, but we also appreciate the opportunity to connect with our what we call our extended family, you all, our viewers out there. So I'm going to ask if our local family, if you would help me to welcome our extended family to Believers Institute on tonight. Praise the Lord. Good to have everybody. Y'all looking good. You know that? All right. Looking better in 2019 than you did in 2018. <laughs> and you should say, praise the Lord. I received that, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, we've had an exciting time around here over the last uh, several weeks. Of course, we had a uh, had our uh, Christmas service, and uh, that was a great service. Then we had our New Year's Eve service with Brother Copeland. Amen. How many of you were here for that? All right. Those of you who were not here and those of you who are watching who did not get to either come or to um, listen, I command you to go back and watch it. All right. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, you will want to thank me that you did. Amen. Amen. Well, this past Sunday, we had our first Sunday service of the year, and uh, it's Wednesday night, so we're having what? Our first Believers Institute of 2019 uh, uh, winter spring session. And I don't know about you, but I can't think of anybody better to kick off and really set the tone for Believers Institute than our very own senior pastor, George Pearsons. He's right over there, he's in the house. And we'll be hearing from him shortly with our first uh, Believers Institute message. But before he comes, I'm going to ask if Pastor Dwayne Munoz, if he would come, he's going to help us to receive tonight's tithes and offerings. Amen. Good evening, family. I love that word, family. You know, what, is, what does that word really entail, family? Well, that there's no strangers in here. Amen. And uh, think about that. We are all part of the great family of God. Hallelujah. And when I'm that word, I'm just just say that word family. You know, that means we all have the same father. Isn't that wonderful? We have the same father. So I just love that word family. And I just love the message. Like I said, uh, Dr. Irby was stating that you didn't get to watch. Or if you weren't here to hear Brother Copeland talk about family, you want to go back and start the year out with listening to that message first. All right. But you're here right now. And I want to talk to you tonight about offering and our tithe and offerings and uh you know this year as as uh brother copeland started it off and then pastor george has been talking about it this is the year of what abundant harvest abundant harvest and just thinking about that that really excites me i'm telling you that i i, I could take off running right now when i think about what i what i can expect to receive this year now do you hear the word that i just said expect are you expecting an abundant harvest? So you can say it all you want. You can keep saying, well, I'm going to I'm believe and I thank God for the abundant harvest. But if you don't have any expectation for it, you won't know when it comes. Come on now. So you got to have your expectation turned up high. I want you to turn your Bibles over to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 
And I want to begin reading in verse 6. This is a familiar scripture that everyone knows. We read it many, many times concerning tithes and offerings. But we read, 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 read like this. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also, how? Bountifully. Every man according as he purposes, purposes in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, I, I want to look at that verse 7 one more time at the very beginning. It says, every man according as he purposed in his what? Heart. Heart. And as we start off this year, we, we must understand that God is looking at the heart of man and how we give. Now, a lot of focus is, is always given on the amount, but we have to look at the way God looks at things. He looks at things with the heart. John 3.16 tells us God so loved the world, did he not, that he gave. He, his love was his motivation to give. He loved you, and he gave. When we give, our motivation should be, first of all, because we love him. And we purpose in our heart to give to him because he so loves you. Now, in this, and now I look at this particular verse, it says the, that the person who sows bountifully uh, will reap bountifully. But I want to I look at something here. A lot of, like I mentioned a moment ago, a lot of focus is, is looked at the, the amount but God is looking at the, uh, the heart. Do you know that a person who sows bountifully can also give grudgingly? Think about that for a moment. Too many people are looking, once again, at the amount. God looks at the heart. There are people who can give large amounts of income or funds into the, uh, into the offering basket, but their heart's not in it. And, and, and to prove this, we see this in Mark chapter 12. You don't have to turn there, but you can if you want. But you're familiar with the, the, uh, uh, the woman who had given all that she had. And in verse 41, out of the NIV, it says, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people, listen to this, many rich people threw in large amounts. But a poor widow woman came and put... Two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more. What's that word? More. Put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of poverty, put in what? That's, what's that word? Everything. All that she had to live on. In other words, she gave because she loved him. Now that widow woman decided in her heart to give all that she had. It's the heart, people. Was it the amount that she gave that impressed Jesus? No. It was that she gave from her heart. There were others before who, who gave large sums of money, but she was noticed by the master because her heart was in it. Others were given largely, but they were probably given to just show what they were able to do. I want to read this out of the Passion Translation, and uh, it, it's really interesting. We look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 in the Passion. Let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves hilarious generosity so when we give tonight attach something to it and let it be a flow from your heart to the Lord as we start this year as we give let's do it from the heart let's show him how much we love him amen God so loved the world he gave oh we love him do we not and let's just give unto him and show him the love that we appreciate him and love him. Amen? So tonight, as you get ready to give, there's an offering envelope in the seat before you. If you need an offering envelope on the front for your cash giving, an usher will provide that for you. 
If you're watching online or by television, simply go to emic.org slash give and you'll see the instructions there on how to give. There's also another way we can do, we can give, and this happens to be my favorite way, and it's quick and easy, it's called text to give, and simply you just text the, the, key, or the, the number 36609 and the keyword EMIC, and then you put the dollar amount. Amen? Hallelujah. May I pray over your offering tonight? Glory to God. Heavenly Father, we just give you the praise and the honor and all the glory. We thank you. Oh, Lord, we thank you. First of all, you showed us how to give, Father. You gave because you love. And Father, today we hilariously give. We give joyfully. Oh, Lord, because we love you and for all that you have done. And Lord, what you are doing this year for the abundant harvest, we, are, we come with expectation. And we thank you for it right now in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. And thank you, Pastor Dwayne, for that marvelous offering lesson. Amen. Did you learn something? We have, how many Bible school students do we have here? Raise your hands. Lots of them. All right. Well, it's time for school to start back. And he kept hitting on one of those words that we use a lot in my class when he's talking about motivations. What's the word we use a lot? We talk about motive, right? How many of you remember that? It hadn't been that long, only a few weeks, right? <laughs> we come back to not what you're doing, and, but motive, what's behind what you're doing, whatever it is, amen, including giving. So while you're giving, let me just share with you just a few announcements um, for your hearing. I'd like to remind you that Healing School and or ministry happens somewhere here every day of the week uh, or night and so I encourage you if you need healing or if you want to just come and get in that environment just to maintain uh, good health or some people come matter of fact quite a few people come just to learn more about healing school and healing the healing ministry so that they can then minister to others that are in need of healing so whatever your reason is let me just let you know that we have that available every day uh, in some form or format so um, you can go to uh, emic.org on the front page of emic.org there is the uh, education tab there click on that and that'll take you to the healing school calendar and you can avail yourselves to that for the month of January also I'd like to remind you of our faith foundations class that's every Sunday which would include this Sunday 9 a.m. Central Standard Time right here in the sanctuary I encourage you to be here all of that y'all that are here now make sure that you come back at 9 a.m. all right and those of you who are watching or listening if you can get here please do we always uh, take that opportunity that's kind of like our Sunday school class although we have other classes going on in other rooms not only for teenagers we have healing school prayer school lots of things going on but in the sanctuary that's kind of our general assembly class and we call it faith foundations and so I encourage you to come here and be uh, participate in that class and your faith will grow it will develop amen amen how the just supposed to live all right, so that's a good reason to come. Am I right about it? Yes. Amen. Well, it only gets better. This Sunday, uh, January 13th, uh, we're going to be welcoming Brother Jerry Savelle. He's going to be right here ministering in our 10 a.m. service. Right here. And uh, so what I'd encourage you to do is come at 9 o'clock for Faith Foundations class and you'll already be here and have a good seat. All right. I'm talking to y'all out there, too. All right. <laughs> Give you advance notice because I'm expecting a full house as we hear what um, uh, the word of the Lord from Brother Jerry Savelle. And that's not quite all because next Wednesday, this is our first Wednesday night of Believers Institute. Next Wednesday night, we'll be welcoming uh, Mark and Trina Hankins. They will be here ministering. Amen. So you'll want to make sure that you're here um, as we're just going to continue to go up and up and higher and higher. Amen. Mark and Trina Hankins will be here and he ministers and flows in the Holy Ghost like uh, just few others that I'm familiar with. And everybody should say, ha, 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 ha. I can't do it like Pastor George. He got him down pretty good. <laughs> But uh, you'll want to be here uh, uh, next Wednesday night as well. And I believe that's all of our announcements. Those of you here, you should have received an outline for tonight's lesson with Pastor George. If you didn't get an outline, if you would raise your hands and we'll make sure that um, some of our ushers or hostesses get one of those to you. Those of you who are watching or listening, you can go to emic.org. 
Uh, yeah, click on the rotator page and that will take you to uh, where you can also not only um, look at the outline, but I believe you can download it as well and follow along. And that's it for me. Are you ready for Pastor George? Yeah. Amen. Well, let's give him a hearty welcome as he comes. <laughs> Pastor George, Thank I, you. I, I've seen you, Pastor. Thank you, Dr. Tony. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Thanks, Dr. Tony, so much. And don't you appreciate all that he does for us here? What a wonderful and amazing individual. You know, he was talking about all the great people that are coming here in uh, February. Rick Renner will be with us, and Rick will be also, Pastor Rick will be teaching in the Bible school for three, count them, three days in a row. And uh, he'll be doing a chapel for us here as well on the campus. Uh, also, in uh, the end of February, we'll have Brother Copeland on the mountain. And we'll have three evenings with him. We'll have daytime sessions on Friday and Saturday, having people come from all over the world to hear the Word of God speak. And then I have something that is really hot off the press. I talked to Jesse today. We talk fairly often. And uh, so he and I have been talking about him coming to the church. So he called me today. He said, he said, I found a date. He said, will this work for you? And I looked at the calendar. I was standing there at the calendar. And I said, yes, sir. So March the 17th, Jesse Duplantis will be here with us. Isn't that wonderful? And it just goes on and on and on and on. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this time here together. And I thank you for this wonderful family, this congregation that you have brought together uh, under this roof. And those who are watching us all over the world to be able to grow in the word of God. In this first part of the year, Lord, we are so watchful over everything that we are hearing and seeing. It is our desire to see you in everything and in every day. And Lord, I pray over this word right now, and I thank you for it. I thank you for blessing this congregation. And that, Lord, I'm expecting that as a, a pastor that is a, a partner with a prophet, that I will teach revelation on the level of a prophet. Illustrations will come. Things will be said that I didn't realize that I was going to even be saying. So, Lord, I thank you that right now there's a Holy Spirit connection taking place from heaven to earth. And I thank you that everyone who is hearing this today will receive exactly what they need to hear. They'll leave this place tonight saying, I needed to hear that. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you would open your Bibles to Psalm 61. Psalm 61, I'm glad that you have your notes with you. One of the reasons why I, I like you having these notes is the ability to go back and study this yourself. Um, you know, Gloria and I did taping yesterday that will be airing uh, this spring. And I was sharing with her all of the outlines, talking about the outlines that we produced over all these years. We finished up at day 340. 340. We have 340 outlines on prosperity that are available on KCM.org. And, you know, you can go to the, the website you can look at the picture of Glory and me because we're on this week. Click on to that and it'll take you right over to all of those outlines. Well, what I was sharing with her was that I now use those outlines as reference for sermons that I preach, the things that I'm studying, because there's such a volume of work on prosperity that's been done. And the Lord just led me to do that almost 10 years ago. Almost 10 years ago. The Lord led me to do that. And over the years, I have kept many of my notes. I've got files of notes at home. Um, I've shared with some that when we began the church in 1993, um, I, I have these, these smaller binders at home that are labeled 1993, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, 94, Sunday, Wednesday. And I did that all the way through 99. Every message that I preached. So I go back to those and I feed on them. And that's why it's so important that you have these outlines to be able to study from, add your own to it. And some of you may end up preaching this at some point or another. So put it in your reference material. It's, it's important for you to hear this because this really is a word from the Lord for us right now at the top of the year. As you will look at the title, it says, Wisdom is the Principal Thing for 2019. Wisdom is the principal thing for 2019. 
I, I receive that in the midst of my study today. It's a wonderful thing to begin your study time praying in the Holy Ghost. And when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you start getting into the Spirit, in the Spirit. And all of a sudden, things start coming out of the Spirit. So I was walking around praying in the Spirit, and all of a sudden, I, saw, I found myself sitting down and beginning to write this message. Before I knew it, I was sitting down, and things were coming out of heaven to earth. And the first thing that came out was wisdom is the principal thing for 2019. With all of our getting, we are going to get wisdom. Psalm 61, verse 1. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You know, I've been praying over our congregation. I do that all the time. And I've just really had a sense, and it's interesting how it started connecting with this message. I, I just had a sense of some of your schedules and the things that are going on in your lives and and the the opportunities to be overwhelmed whether it's to be overwhelmed in the financial realm the family realm uh, there are those that have that are that are raising children and all kinds of schedules that are taking place uh, I, I think a lot of people really do sense that and feel that as we're going along it just seems like things are happening faster and faster and faster and the demand is so much there. You know, back when I was growing up, Sunday was church day. Sunday was church day. And there was, there was such a quiet in the town that we were in. When we would drive to church on Sunday morning, it was just really peaceful. And it just seemed like everybody was in church. And stores were closed. Grocery stores were closed. Department stores were closed. It was just, it was just a different time. And now it's different. It's different to where you have, you have competitive sports for children that are taking place on Sunday. You have all kinds of things. It just has all run together. And we are, we're running at this speed of light. And, and we need help. We've got to have help. All of us need to have help from heaven. I need to have help. In the, the, the jobs that I'm doing right now, the responsibilities that I have, I certainly need the help of the Lord. People look at me and go, how are you doing what you're doing? I'll tell you, it's right in this word. I, I really look to the wisdom of God because I can't do this thing on my own. I can't run on fumes. I've got to be filled up. That's why I enjoy so much my Saturdays because my entire Saturdays are devoted to spending that time with the Lord. And then I get to come into church and we just have a marvelous time together, just worshiping him and glorifying him. It helps me. It helps me for the rest of the week. I've got to have that. And then for Wednesday nights, to be able to come in here and be refreshed and recharged, we need that midweek uh, refreshing to get, to the re get through the rest of the week and to hear things that we need to hear. Way back when I was, before I was pastoring the church, and I was executive director at the time, there were times when we didn't want to come to church on Wednesday night. But we did. And one of the things that really helped us was our children because they demanded to go to church on Wednesday night. They did not want to miss Wednesday nights. And I remember one evening, Terry and I, we had just gotten home from work and we were seriously, seriously thinking about staying home. And Jeremy and Aubrey would not have it. They wouldn't have it. So we, we all got in the car. We came out here in the chapel building at the time. And, and I would come into the service just really kind of tired from the day. But the more I was in this atmosphere, the more charged I would get, the more inspired I would be. And by the time I left church, I was so glad that I came. There's really something about being in this atmosphere to be able to soak up the word of God and be able to allow it to do some things in our lives. Well, life can, as I put down in your notes here, life can get complicated. A lot going on. A lot of things happening. A lot of decisions that you and I face on a daily basis. What do I do about this? How do I handle that? Should I go here? Should we go there? What, what should I do for the future? All of these decisions that we have before us. And managing a household on top of that and then working on top of that. And so whenever issues begin to pile up and pressure starts building, we should immediately think about this scripture. 
we should immediately look to Psalm 61, 1 and 2. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You know, I was thinking, even driving in here tonight, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. I believe that our steps are ordered by him and he will direct us. He will show us. He will reveal to us what to do. And there are some days, I have a little organizational system that I've been using for years. Um, I tried going to iPad on it and I just, I just really like writing. So I enjoy writing and I like paper. So I have this organizational system that I have. And there's some days I put them on little cards. Every day's on a little card. And there, <laughs> there are some days that I look at that little card and I look at all the things that I have set before me. And then maybe things going into the evening. And I just lay my hand on that card and I say, thank you, Lord, for the strength for this day. Thank you, Father, for the wisdom that I need to be able to deal with each one of the issues that, are, that is on this card. And I thank you, Lord. I, I thank you that there's going to be a time when I'll lay my head down on the pillow and I will go to sleep. That will happen. And he's been so faithful. He's been so faithful. And I remember times as a pastor, there was one particular day many years ago. I had two funerals to do in one day. Two funerals in one day. We had one in the morning and we had one in the afternoon. And boy, I'll tell you, the Lord helped. He really helped in, in both of those. Because the first funeral I had to do, um, there was such strife and animosity between the families. They had their attorneys there. But you know what? You go into a situation like that, and, and Brother Copeland has taught me before, you take authority over that grief. You take authority over whatever is going on in that service, and you take command of it. You take command of it. And you tell it what it's supposed to do. So the love of God, it absolutely engulfed everyone. And by the time we left there, I mean family were hugging each other. They were loving each other. So, but we're, we're dealing with issues on a daily basis. Things that are going on. Phone, phone calls that, that you might get for those of you who are raising children. Phone calls from schools. Come and pick up your child. They're not feeling well. So, you know, like Terry and I, what we would have to do back in those days, we would, we'd have to determine which one of us has the, the least meetings that day. And so I said, well, I, I've got the least going on. I'll go pick up Aubrey or I'll go pick up Jeremy. Or if she could do it, she would do that. <clears throat> but that was, you know, that was really keeping up with all of that and keeping up with the activities at school. So you know what I'm talking about. You understand what I'm saying, where this is concerned. And, and even though we don't have children in our home anymore, um, just in the role of pastoring and, and leading the ministry and all of that, there's just a lot that's going on. And then we do, we've got grandchildren. So there's, there, there's all of that mixed in together. So as the Lord said to me, he said, life can get complicated. It can get complicated. <laughs> but when our hearts are overwhelmed, <clears throat> we need to reach for a higher vantage place. This is point number four. When our hearts are overwhelmed, we need to reach for a higher vantage place to get a better perspective. To really get, get, uh, get back away from the fray. I heard someone that had, been, had wor worked for Brother Hagen uh, talk about not getting caught up in the fray. But just standing back from it from a higher vantage point. Seeing it from a higher place. We, we get to a place in our lives where we're down like this and we're, we're in the forest. We are dealing with the demons and we're, we're fighting the good fight of faith. But sometimes you just have to back away from it and look down on it and get the wisdom of God. Hear what he wants you to do about that particular issue. And so when our hearts are overwhelmed, we reach for a higher vantage place to get a better perspective. And I'll put this up on the screen. The wisdom of God is the rock that we stand on in challenging times. Thank God for his wisdom. Thank God for his wisdom. You have the wisdom of God. We'll get into that as we go along. But you have the wisdom of God. You have direction available to you. You have all the help that you need to get done everything that you need to do with much time left over. You do. If you will walk by faith in this. And begin to apply some of these things that I'm going to be sharing with you. Something towards the end, especially that Brother Copeland taught, taught me himself. Was something that uh, Brother Or Roberts taught him. And he's passed it down to us. 
It's so important to know how to get a hold of all of this. I mean, it really can get to a place where it's just too much. You feel like this is too much. Too much is going on. And when you get to this place, that's the place where we dig into the wisdom of God. And he knows how to orchestrate. He knows how to pull it together. He knows, he knows how to order our steps. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're dealing with. And he's got the answers for it. There's a whole team in heaven that is working on our behalf. Helping us. But we have to, we really do have to get to the place where we, we do not say, we do not say, I've got this one and I don't need his help. I've got this one. And we slip over into that. We, we very slowly sometimes slip away from the help of the Holy Spirit into the place where we are now, we are now carrying this. We're carrying the weight of it. And the Lord has really taught me some things about receiving help, not, not just from the word, not just from him, but from others as well. And he taught me a lesson about this. One time we had a group of people at the house and Terry sent me to get hamburgers for lunch. So, <coughs> excuse me, I went to this place close by and, and got the hamburgers and I looked over there and they had these popcorn, popcorn in little popcorn holders. And I looked at it and the lady looked at me. She said, well, those are free. Take one. I said, oh, thank you. So I had all of these hamburgers and drinks and my popcorn. And I'm going out the door and the girl said to me, can I help you with that? I said, no, I've got it. <laughs> and I had a witness in my heart that that was not the thing to say. But I kicked the door open <laughs> like that and I stepped out and I went over to my car and so I had to unlock the car. So I put, I put the uh, hamburgers on top of the car and I set my popcorn over here and there was a wind that blew. And there goes my popcorn <laughs> all over Boat Club Road. It was floating down upon all the cars that were going by. And the Lord said, I sent you help. You could have still had your popcorn <laughs> if you had not. If you had taken up that individual's opportunity, and I've done that since then, I, I really do. I receive help. And when I receive help from people, uh, it's a practice of receiving help from heaven because you sometimes you just can't see that kind of help. But I'm telling you, he wants to direct your steps. He wants to give you the wisdom that you need because he's got the answers to this. I don't care how complicated it is. I don't care how, how much of a mess you may have gotten into. There are answers, wisdom, and direction for everything you are dealing with right now. Right now. And we have to be positioned to receive it. Turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. And in Proverbs 4, we begin this about the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. I need his wisdom. I need his wisdom for 2019. There are things that we have coming up before us that we've got to hear from heaven. We all have to hear from heaven in terms of decision making. And what, what are you going to do about this? Or what are you going to do about that? Or what's the answer for this? I want clarity. I like clarity. In my role as CEO, I'll have meetings with people and then we'll meet again because I need clarity. Did I hear you say this? Is this what you said? Is this what, is this what you were communicating? And many times I find out that it's still kind of convoluted and it's still kind of gray to where I just like to get it really clear. And when it comes to the making of decisions and the things that we face on a daily basis, I want to hear a clear word from heaven. You can hear that. You can hear that. We need to do the same thing that in 1 Kings, Solomon did. He had taken over from his father, David. And he went before the Lord and, and he had a dream. And the Lord said, whatever you ask, I'll give you. And Solomon went before the Lord and he said, he said, I have now taken over from my, do my father, David. And I'm but a child. I don't know how to come in. I don't know how to go out. I'm new at this. 
I'm new at this. So you know what Solomon asked for? He asked for a hearing heart. A hearing heart. It is the will of God for every one of us to hear from the Lord. To be led by His Spirit. To receive the inner witness. As Brother Hagin calls it, the, the green light or the red light. Or, or, or knowing, having a knowing on the inside of, of exactly what to do. Such clarity, such, such clearness, such, such a confidence on the inside. That's for every one of us. That belongs to us. And, and the Lord said to Solomon, his answer to Solomon was, because you didn't ask for the life of your enemies, you didn't even ask for finances, he said, I will give you a hearing heart and I will give you wisdom like none other has had it before. I'll give you wisdom. And the first thing that he faced right after that were the two women that were bringing the baby. And he said, hand me a sword. Oh, there's that wisdom right there. Hand me a sword. And I'll show you what to do. The wisdom, the spirit of wisdom was working on the inside of him. Well, that same spirit of wisdom that was in him, that dwells on the inside of you. And if we take hold of it and we, we receive it and we act on our faith with it, we, we will find more and more and more that we will have that knowing and that confidence on the inside. Like Walter Roberts used to say, I know that 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 I know. I know. I know. And wisdom, we have to tap into the wisdom of God. In Proverbs 4, I'll start. I'm going to read verses 5 through 13. Then we'll come back and comment on it. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Proverbs 4, 5. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. You know, when you see the word wisdom, you can really substitute it for the word. The word. The word of God is the wisdom of God. And when we read our scriptures every day and we read through the word of God, that's where it becomes revelation to us. It speaks to us. It talks to us. So he's saying here in verse 6, forsake her not, and she shall preserve you. Wisdom will preserve you. You'll know how to take care of yourself. You'll know how to do the things that you need to do and should do. It'll preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, exalt wisdom, and she shall promote you. She shall bring you to honor when you do embrace her. She shall give your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory will wisdom deliver to you. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, for the years of your life will be many. Through wisdom. I've taught thee in the way of wisdom, the way of wisdom, the way of wisdom. I preached on the wisdom of God in 2017 and that was the title of the message, the way of wisdom. And there's a little, a little mini book that I wrote. Kenneth and Gloria heard me preach that Sunday and they called me that afternoon and said, you need to write a book about that. So we, we got her done. I was reading it today. I read through my little book, the way of wisdom. So he's saying here that I've taught you in the way of wisdom, the ways of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you go, your steps shall not be straightened. Or in other words, you'll not be hindered. When you run, you shall not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her. For she, wisdom, the word is your life. Wisdom is your life. The Word is your life. Say, the Word is my life. That's why I so enjoy being with Kenneth and Gloria and this ministry. The Word of God is their lives. When I was taping with Gloria the other day and, and 
you know, I bring my notes in there, but she has so much more to say. And I was sitting there listening to her, and all that word that's been deposited for over 50 years, that word is coming up and out of her. And she looked at me at one point during the taping, and she said, George, I love the Word of God. I can tell. I can tell. Don't you love the Word of God? Don't you love His Word? Don't you appreciate His Word? Well, it says here in verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Principal thing means first in importance and your number one priority. Number one priority is wisdom. It's the principal thing. It's what you need. It's what you need to not only survive, it's what you need to thrive. And when you tap into the wisdom of God, you are going to see things and you're going to receive answers and direction for every single thing that you are facing. There is, there is nothing, nothing that is so complicated, so unreasonable, that God on his throne has not heard before and solved. Nothing. There's nothing. You, you can go to him with whatever situation you have, and he will, he will never go, oh my God. <laughs> we, we've never handled this before. Angels, have you ever seen? No, we have never seen anything like this of this kind before. No. No. He has the wisdom for you. He has the wisdom for you. Verse 7 in the New Living Translation says, getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. I like that. The Passion Translation, wisdom is the most valuable commodity, so buy it. Revelation knowledge is what you need, so invest in it. The Septuagint in verse 8 says, build a fort for wisdom and she will lift you high. Build a place for the wisdom of God to be able to receive the direction and the answers. Wisdom sees every issue from God's perspective. Everything. Wisdom is God's answer to all that we face. Wisdom is God's answer to all that we face. Wisdom will unravel and untangle whatever mess we've gotten ourselves into. That's what wisdom will do for us. It is, it is seeing what you're dealing with right now from God's perspective. How does He see it? How does He see you functioning? How does He see you operating in this particular thing? And I do that all the time. I look to Him all the time. For the myriad of things that are going on around here, things that are taking place not only in the ministry but with our families and, and all of that. I'm looking for the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is like a light that shines in a dark place. It, is, it is, directs us in the way that we should go. And if there is a why at the road and there's a sign that says wisdom this way, and natural fleshly that way. I'm going that way. <laughs> I'm going the way of wisdom. I'm going the way of wisdom. And wisdom will, it'll unravel. It's like a, it's like a, a, a well, if you've ever been fishing, when I was a kid, I used to go fishing with my grandfather. And he had all kinds of uh, uh, reels and poles and what a collection that he had this was this was salt water fishing big time fishing I had an uncle who was a professional fisherman commercial fisherman and he used to win all of these awards and catch the biggest bass and all that kind of thing and I remember as a kid when I would go fishing and they would teach me how to use the reel but sometimes I'd throw the reel out there and have you ever been fishing when that reel just got so tangled it just flops in there and then, then you spend an hour trying to, to unwind and untangle and it seems like it's, it's totally impossible. Well, that's the way some of our issues look. It looks so, so confusing, so tangled up. Family issues, so engulfed in emotion and strife. And as we look to the wisdom of God and say, Lord, what, what do you want me to do about this? All of a sudden, that mess begins to straighten out. It begins to, to line up. It becomes straight again. And that's what the wisdom of God does for us, for you, for me. 
and, and whatever, whatever we've gotten ourselves into. I don't know about you, but th there's some things that have happened in my life that have been my fault. It was my fault. The devil, he was just standing there laughing at me. It was my, my dumb fault that I did whatever it was that I did. And you know, the wonderful thing is that we can go to the Lord and repent. Father, I repent for that. I repent for making that decision or going that direction. And I'm asking you, Lord, to make this right. Make it right. Show me what to do. Give me your wisdom on it. And sure enough, every time he's done it, he's straightened out whatever I've gotten myself into. It's like, anybody ever watch Laurel and Hardy? That's another fine mess you've gotten us into. <laughs> well, it, there are some fine messes that we've gotten ourselves into. But the Lord is so faithful. He's like, I will show you, I will show you how to get out of this. And you will come out on top. You will. I remember back several years ago, walking through the building. I've told you about this. That I walked through that building. The building, some of it sat there for 10 years. And I'd walk through it, and I, I was the man of faith at one point. Then I walked in there one day, and I wasn't the man of faith. I was, I was like hitting myself in the head going, why did I build this monstrosity? We could have built whatever, sh smaller, shorter amount of time. Why did I do this? And I was up there one day on the second floor, and I'm just looking from one end of that, that building to the other, and I, and I said, I, I, have, I, have, I have created a lemon. And seriously, the Lord said, I will make lemonade out of your lemon. <laughs> he, knows, he knows those kinds of phrases. But I laughed when he said it. And you know, I was walking up there the other day. Pastor Tony, Dr. Tony was up there in his office. And I had, I had a break in between meetings that I was having here in the church. And you saw me, I was up there walking around. You know what I was doing? I was walking around giving God thanks. I was going from room to room. The Lord took that building and gave it a purpose and got it done starting in January of last year, finishing in, finishing in October, in time for the classes to actually begin. There are things that had to be tweaked. The, the auditorium was done in October. And I just walked through it. And, you know, I just, I just thank God for his wisdom. The wisdom of God. And how faithful he is. And remembering the very spot where I was standing, where I said, I've created a lemon. And where he said to me, I'll make lemonade out of this. And I was just so grateful to him. He'll do that with you. Whatever, whatever you've done. If you, if you have invested unwisely in some things. He'll get your money back sevenfold. He'll do it. He'll take care of that. Whatever mistake, he majors in our mistakes. He really does. <laughs> he majors. He majors in getting us out of those things that we've gotten ourselves into. Does anybody have Amplified Bible here on the front row? Amplified translation. Would you look Hebrews 4? Hebrews 4.16 in the Amplified translation. He's so good to us. And that's why we have to, I've been thinking about you so much. I've just been thinking about you, praying over you. I'm so happy to see you tonight. The Lord is working tremendously on your behalf, doing amazing things, helping you, helping you, strengthening you. Two ladies right here, just lay your hands on her. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, for Suzanne, I thank you. I thank you for a manifestation of your goodness and your love in your compassion and thank you that we all are looking forward to seeing our man of God in heaven in Jesus name amen your face has just been coming up it's been coming up to me I'm so glad to see you let me see Hebrews 4 and verse 16 it says let us fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners that we may receive mercy for our failures. Hmm. That we may receive mercy for our failures. And find grace to help in good time for every need 
appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. So you wrote in your Bible. <laughs> when you mess up, get back on track. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> Give her a hand. That's really good. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Wisdom is the principal thing. Look with me at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Be filled with his wisdom. Be filled up with the wisdom of God. In the King, King James Version in verse 9, it says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. What a scripture. To be filled with the knowledge of his will. Lord, what is your will for this situation? What is it that you want to do? That's what we've been praying. That's what we've been praying. What is it you want to do? What's the will of God in this situation? And you're walking through it. You're walking through it. And you're seeing it. And you're getting the wisdom of God. And that wisdom is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. The wisdom of God is really a demonstration of His love. Because when somebody sits down with you and you've got a problem and they begin to lay out before you, hey, look, here's an answer. That's the love of God being manifested forth. And that's what His wisdom is. It is a talk with the Father, a talk with our Heavenly Father, imparting that fatherly wisdom into us. In the Amplified Classic Translation, that you may be filled with the full, deep, and clear knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom, in comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God. That is a great definition of the wisdom of God. Comprehensive insight into His ways and His purposes. That clearly defines what His wisdom is, the way of God. And that's what I want. That's what you want. I want His ways in my life. I want His ways in my family. I want His ways in, ways in our church, in the Bible school, in the ministry. I want His ways in your lives, your businesses your work, the things that you do, the things that you're involved in. We spend a couple of hours together on Sunday. We spend an hour or so on Wednesday night. But then you go out there into your mission fields and you're doing your work and you're doing your business. And then we come back together again. But all during the week, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for the wisdom of God for you. I'm praying for issues and things that you're facing and things that you are dealing with. And things that are going on in your lives. And, and the Lord gives Pastor Terry and me divine appointments out there. In stores. In gas stations. In different places. When you least expect it. There's Pastor George and Terry. <laughs> but that's the wisdom of God. And in Proverbs 2, 6 and 7. For the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. We've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. We are right with him. So that wisdom has been laid up. It's been stored up for us. All we have to do is to tap into the wisdom. It's waiting for us. But we have to take it. We have to receive it by faith. And so I want, I want to, to remind you of something that I've taught you before, but I want you to strike the phrase, I don't know what to do from your vocabulary. Strike it from your vocabulary. And I'll give you something else to say. Because there are things that I, I need the wisdom of God on. And that's a better way to put it. I need the wisdom of God. 
But I'm retraining myself and retraining my thinking and to not... And that's what the Lord does with us because we know the power of our words. And as we go along in our lives, there are more and more things that he shows to us. Reveals to us. Things that we say by rote. Things that we say all the time. Like, you'll never hear me say, I'm going to say it now, but I'm not saying it about myself. But that blows me away. I don't want to be blown away. <laughs> I mean, the Lord will show you things. He'll, sh he'll show you things that you say on, on just repeating and you don't even know you're saying it. And he'll, he'll bring it to your memory. He'll bring it to your thinking. And you can change that. Well, that's what he showed me. Don't say, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. What are you going to do about that? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. What are you doing? You're building a fortress of I don't know what to do is on the inside. You're building a fortress of confusion. And that's not what we want to do. We want clarity. We want understanding. So when we strike that from our vocabulary, instead we begin to confess, I believe I receive the perfect wisdom of God. Say this after me. I believe I, believe I, receive, I receive the perfect wisdom of God. Wisdom of God. By, faith, By faith, I know exactly what to do. That's why I put that down on paper for you so you can go back and you can read it and study it. And really make that part of your declarations and the confessions that you make about yourself. I believe I receive the perfect wisdom of God. What about this situation over here? I believe I receive the perfect wisdom of God. By faith, I know exactly what to do. By faith, I know what to do. I know what to do. I see it. I receive it. I believe it. And it'll, the answers will come more quickly when you make that adjustment. A simple adjustment. Because the wisdom of God has been stored up for you. It's been laid up for you. And the Lord will show you and reveal to you what we call the key issue. The key issue. What's the key issue to that particular situation? What's the key issue to this? There's a key issue. And oftentimes in our lives, there may be one key issue that will unlock the door to everything. One thing that you may be doing, one thing that's going on that needs to be adjustment. One adjustment. The key issue. What is the key issue? Turn to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. <clears throat> and look with me. I'll read this through, then we'll talk about it. Verse 2. <coughs> My brethren... Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy when you fall into different temptations. Boy, you can spend some time on that one, couldn't you? Yeah. Woohoo! Ha ha ha! <laughs> when you fall into when stuff just seems to be going wrong, count it all joy. Whoa! Glory to God! Knowing this, that the trying of your faith puts patience to work. Patience. Uh, let me read to you a couple of definitions. I have a collection of definitions that I, I've made over the years of patience. Just collected them from different speakers. But one of them was patience. It is the endurance that outlasts any assault. That's what patience is. The force of patience. Patience, patience is, is not uh, hunkering down until the storm passes over. That's not what patience is. Patience isn't just, just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. No, it is a force of the human spirit. It's the ability to act like you have it before you see it. That patience working down on the inside. Patience, it doesn't surrender to circumstances. It doesn't give up. It doesn't quit. It undergirds faith until the answer comes. So knowing this, that the trying of your faith puts patience to work. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. When you're under attack and that force of patience is put to work on the inside, you'll come out of it perfected, matured, entire, wanting nothing, whole in every way. And then it says here, if any of you lack wisdom... And I wrote in my Bible, if any of you lack wisdom about the trial and the temptation, or whatever it is you're going through, or whatever it is you're facing, or whatever it is the challenges that you have around you, if any of you lack wisdom for that, 
Let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. That's an important scripture right there. If any of you lack wisdom in anything, anything, and if we were to take the time tonight and sit and talk with each and every one of you about the things that you are facing, we would keep coming back to this. If any of you lack wisdom about them, that let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it will be given him. Put your hands out like this and say, I receive wisdom, I receive wisdom. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. I know exactly what to do. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, not doubting, not hesitating. For he that wavers is like the wave of a sea, driven with the wind and tossed. When you doubt this, then you're like that wave driven. The devil drives. The Holy Spirit guides, leads, directs. He that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A single-minded, double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Well, you can turn that scripture around. And when you ask in faith, nothing wavering, you're no longer like the wave of the sea driven with the wind. But you're strong. You're stable. You're, you're fixed in the word of God and you will receive what you ask of the Lord because a single minded individual on the word of God's wisdom is stable in all of his ways. Single minded, focused, focused. When you are focused on the word, when you are focused on the answer, when you are focused on the desired result instead of the dreaded outcome, it's going to work on your behalf. And you are going to be stable in all of your ways. There's a stability that is going to come out of walking in the wisdom of God. Stable in all things. I'm so grateful for the wisdom that he has for us. Answers, insights into the ways of God. Insights into the ways of the kingdom of heaven. Oh Lord, we want that for our lives. I want his ways. I want his direction. I want, I want his input on everything that I do. Every conversation that I have, every decision that is being made, I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. I want to be guided by the Holy Spirit. I listen a lot to Brother Hagen and some of the teaching that he has on how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And he talks about, you know, you, you really get to the place when you're doing something and, and you have this sense that you're washing your feet with your socks on. That's that you're being led by the Holy Spirit. You're being directed by God to not do that or not to make that decision. And he'll help you. He'll direct you. He'll guide you. Oral Roberts once told Brother Copeland, when a ministry is facing a financial blockade, you must go before the Lord and locate the key issue. That key or the wisdom of God that will unlock the door and get the finances flowing again. I have, that what I carry with me, I carry a, a badge that unlocks doors. It's the key. And it would be very difficult for me to get into the executive building and into areas around here without that badge. But there is a key badge that I have that gets me into everything. It gets me, it'll get me into every building on this property. It's the key badge. It unlocks every door. And that's just like the key issue, isn't it? The key issue will unlock the wisdom, the treasure of wisdom that is stored up for you. And you have that badge. You have the code, F-A-I-T-H. You have it. That's the code to get in to the wisdom of God. And so Brother Robert said that key or the wisdom of God will unlock the door and get the finances flowing again. This illustration that I used many years ago, Brother Copeland was experiencing joint pain. And he went before the Lord for the key issue. What is it? 
claiming my healing, but what, what, what do I need to know about this? And the Lord said to him, quit drinking coffee. Brother Copeland, many years ago, being a pilot, would have a thermos, huge thermos. And he would drink 16 cups of coffee a day. And the Lord said to him, the key issue of it was, stop drinking coffee. And when he stopped drinking coffee, the joint pain ceased. Wow. There's a key issue. There's a key issue that unlocks the door to everything that we face. And that's the wisdom of God. That's what we, that's what we press into. And here I've listed before you on this point three, four, and five. <coughs> I've listed before you what Brother Roberts said to Kenneth Copeland when he was a student at ORU. And Brother Roberts was being driven by Brother Copeland to the meeting. And Brother Roberts would sit there with his Bible up to his face like this. And Brother Copeland was warned, you never talk to the man of God when he's going to a meeting. But one day he was reading something. And he slammed his Bible down. He said, Kenneth, there are people that will tell you you can't do it. But you have to follow these three things. And he started listing out what I listed to you. That was in 19... 67, when Kenneth Copeland was driving Oral Roberts to the meetings. In 1976, Terry and I had gotten engaged. I had taken her home to see the parents. We were students at ORU. And then we flew to Texas to meet her parents. And we, we ended up that time, Brother Copeland was going to fly us back to the campus at ORU. So during that flight, Kelly and Terry were sitting behind us, and I was up front with Brother Copeland in the right seat. And he turned to me, and he said, George, there'll be people that'll tell you that you can't do it. But he said, you need to do these three things. And I was scrambling for a pen and a piece of paper in the same way that Brother Copeland was trying to remember everything because he's driving. <laughs> and so this is what the Lord said to Brother Copeland. This is what he said to me. Commit one to three days to pray about nothing else except God's wisdom concerning the issue that is causing the greatest amount of pressure. Now Terry and I have done that. We've done that before. There are times when we have actually taken off and gone away for three days to pray about some. And answers always come. They always come. Now, sometimes you, you don't have the luxury of doing that. So what you have to do is adapt whatever you can. Maybe it's a lunch period, a lunch time. And you take that lunch time and maybe fast that lunch. And take the time before the Lord and just set that, set that thing before Him. Bring that before Him. And it's very interesting sometimes how you bring something to Him... But it's, it's not just that. It covers, it covers a lot of different things. And it may not even be that. It may be this. See, that's what comes. That's what comes when you're praying about something. And you're saying, that, that, that relative of mine, that relative, that relative of mine. And what they're doing to me and what they're saying to me. And you, you present that to him and he may present something back to you and say, well, actually it's you. You're the problem. You're the one. Oh. Oh, yeah, don't want to hear that. But that's the wisdom of God. And what happens is something changes on the inside of you. So that when that something changes on the inside of you, then your attitude towards that individual will change. They won't be that mean, horrible individual anymore, you will have chance. That's what I'm saying. You get into places like this and it really is an adventure in prayer and with the Lord in hearing from Him and getting direction from Him. I love that direction. I love it when the Lord gives me direction about the ministry, about things that we're doing here. I was with Terry the other day and boy, I saw it when it hit her. I believe we need to do such and such. Boy, my goodness. It was like, like an explosion in the room. What was it? That's the wisdom of God. 
and it dropped down on the inside of her to where it's like, okay, all right, all right, that's what we need to do. It's time. We, we must do that. And that'll happen with you. But he's saying, commit. Commit time. You have to commit time to this. Turn off the television. Set the phone aside. And commit the time to get into his presence and pray out the plan in tongues. Pray out the plan in tongues. You know, I go through these periods of time where we're so busy with things going on. All of a sudden, the Lord will say to me, you've, you've really slowed down on praying in the Spirit. Thank you, sir. <coughs> I, I received that correction. And so I start praying in the Spirit. I took time today, which is, it was rare for me to have as much time as I did. I took a lot of time today praying in tongues. Oh, it was so refreshing. It was such a, it was such a blessing to me to be able to do that. That's where... That's what I'm saying to you right now is really an interpretation of what I prayed out in the Spirit this afternoon. Things that I'm saying to you, the way I'm talking to you right now, really is an interpretation of what happened today. I remember many years ago, we were facing a, a tremendous situation um, uh, at Oral Roberts University. I was the uh, chairman of the board at the time. And I mean, the school was going down really fast. Finances were driving, drying up. And we, were, we had just hit a terrible, terrible place. And I remember we had a big board meeting that was going to take place the next day. So that evening, I went back to my room and I just, I spent time praying in the Holy Ghost. And this is the way the Lord leads. This is the way wisdom leads. The, the Lord said, when you, get, when you get the board together, and I'm talking about board members like Kenneth Copeland, Jerry Savelle, uh, John Hagee, generals in the faith, and I'm the chairman of this thing. You get them all together, and before you start your meeting, you pray in tongues, and then believe me for the interpretation of tongues in that meeting. So when I gathered them all, and that came out of the night before when I was praying, the plan, it's the plan, it's the wisdom of God. So when I came in the next day, I had them all stand, and we just prayed in tongues together. And I made the declaration that what happens today is going to be a, a result of us praying in tongues. It will be an interpretation of that. And before the day was out, the Hobby Lobby Green family came to that meeting and dropped in our laps seven million dollars. And they made a proposal to us, which we eventually accepted. And they came in, they changed up the board and so forth and so on. And the school is doing amazing today. But we were, we were on the verge. It was on the verge of closing its doors on that dark November day. But I prayed in tongues and then came before the board because the Lord had wisdom. He had wisdom. And what that $7 million did, it kept our doors open through December. It got bills paid off. There were there were a lot of there was a debt load. There was a lot of debt load that I had discovered. And one of the things that we prayed about was that the school would be completely out of debt. And it's completely out of debt. <laughs> completely out of debt. Now I didn't get I, I didn't get to go to the promised land, so to speak, but I, I was fine to leave. I was good. I was good. I was, I was okay with it. Because I knew it was going in the direction that it needed to go. But that's just an example to you of of what the Lord will show you in prayer and then you be obedient to walking that out. Pray, pray the plan in, pray out the plan in tongues. God's wisdom comes out of the spirit realm. Praying in tongues is dipping the bucket down into the well of wisdom and knowledge and drawing that wisdom up. When I'm praying in tongues, and I'll be praying in the spirit for different reasons. If I'm physically tired in my body, I'll be praying for the refreshing. That I'll be built up and strengthened. If I need the wisdom of God, I'll pray in tongues for the wisdom of God. I'll pray in tongues if I'm going into a meeting, if I'm going into a situation that, that might be considered tenuous or, or difficult. I'll just pray in the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, you take over this thing. And, and I see the plan of God unfold. You can do the same thing. Whatever you're going through. And we're going to do that before we leave tonight. We're going to stand together and we're going to pray in tongues 
over whatever it is that's going on and get the wisdom of God. So he said, pray out the plan in tongues. 1 Corinthians 14, 12, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries, divine secrets, secret truths and hidden things not obvious to the understanding. Or what is that? The key issues. The key issues. Say this after me. I believe. I, believe. I, receive, I receive. The perfect wisdom of God. Wisdom of God. By, faith, By faith. I know exactly what to do. You'll be amazed at how your year, your year will end up. I prayed in tongues a lot this year with us heading towards a four and a half million dollar deficit. I prayed in tongues a lot. And by golly, when we came to the first of December, we were no longer in that deficit, but we were on the positive side. And we began to grow and grow from there. And the church, church did the same thing. Spirit of increase is on us right now. I'm telling you, it's on us. The, the overflow. That's why when I was praying in tongues, the Lord led me to do that whole series on living in the overflow. I needed to hear it. I needed to feed on it. And so did you. And we're living on the overflow. We are blessed beyond measure. There's a lot to do. A lot of things going on here. A lot to take care of. But it's not an overwhelming problem because we know in whom we trust. He's going to help. He's giving us wisdom and giving you wisdom. Finally, the Brother Robert said to Brother Copeland and then Brother Copeland said to me, pray until you know what to do. Pray until you know what to do. Don't make a move until you get wisdom. Don't let deadlines get you out of faith into worry. The answers will come. The answers will come. It'll look like the easiest thing that you've ever done. Find out what the will of God is. Find out what the will of God is. That's what, brother, that's what Brother Roberts was telling Brother Copeland. That's what Brother Copeland said to me. Find out what the will of God is. Confer no longer with flesh and blood. You might want to write this down. Find out what the will of God is. And I just gave you keys to finding out the wisdom and the will of God. Find out what the will of God is. Then confer no longer with flesh and blood. And then he said, get your job done at all costs. Get the job done at all costs. I want you to stand up with me if you would right now. And hold on to your paper because we're going to make this declaration of faith of the wisdom of God. You'll know what to do. You have the wisdom operating on the inside of you. It's there. It's there. We just need to tap into it. So first of all, um, I want us to do this. I want us to pray in the Spirit together. And those of you watching us, you do the same thing. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. And what we're doing is we are specifically praying in the Spirit for the wisdom of God. Now, Father, as we come before you in this time, we begin to pray in the Holy Spirit and specifically, specifically, to reach in and receive the wisdom of God. Now let's pray in tongues together. Ariala Bakashta Kariata Bosa Sabrabakash to Kadabasasam. Ina Matesi de Ragash to Kitty Atakadabasa Sabrabakash to Kadabasasam. Ariana Makasabrabokosh to Kurumos the same remegidi de Bushkati Arabasasam. Aramashakaramasa Sabramakash to Kedidi. Ida Baramasa Sabramakash to Korabasa Sabramigidi de Bishkati Arabasasam. Ala Mashotoroko Sabramakash to Kitty Arabasasam. We're praying about the wisdom. We're praying about the plan. So you pray in the Spirit, 
You pray in the Spirit, and then you go to the Word. You look at what the Word says. You look at what the Word declares. So say this after me. According to Colossians 1.9, 1 I am filled with the full, deep, and clear knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom, in comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God. According to Isaiah 11.2, the Spirit of the Lord rests upon me. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. According to 1 Corinthians 1.30, Jesus has been made unto me. Wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. According to Proverbs 2, 6 and 7. The Lord gives me wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. God has laid up sound wisdom for me. According to Ephesians 1.17. God has granted me. A spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of Him. By faith, I believe, I receive the perfect wisdom of God. By faith, I know exactly what to do. Now let's give God praise and thanksgiving for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Glory to the name of the Lord. Praise you, Lord God. Praise God. Praise God. Pastor Tony, if you would please come. And let me mention something before... Uh, Pastor Tony begins the dismissal process. I have to tell you, I made a, I made a, come on, I made a, an error in the, in the telling of that story. <clears throat> what happened, the, the three thing, first three things that I told you, Brother Copeland told me those things, those were things Brother Roberts told him that came later. In the airplane is what Brother Copeland said to me about find out the will of God, confer no longer with flesh and blood, and then get your job done. So I, need, I needed to get that straightened out. I was, I, was, I was living in two stories at the same time. And so I needed to correct that for you. Thank you for allowing me that. Privilege. Yeah. He, the, in the car, he said those three. Will of God. And yeah, that's what he said in the car. And said to me in the airplane. Then that other, though, that came at another time when he and I were sitting and talking about... The, the debt situation that Terry and I were in. And that was, that was the uh, wisdom that he was giving to me. So I needed to straighten that out. Thank you for allowing me that correction. Dr. Tony, I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor George. <laughs> Y'all get anything out of the message tonight? I think we've been set on track. Welcome uh, to the end of the service here. Wisdom is the principal thing for 2019. Pastor George started us off. Brother Copeland started this thing, man, on New Year's Eve with a bang. And then tonight about wisdom. And you know, that's the truth. If you have the answers and the wisdom of how to, how to get it, and, and you have the ability to get it, and you get it through the Holy Spirit in you and, and in the Word. Uh, I want to uh, tell you that you can get all that information. Let me just flip the screen here very quickly. And you go to uh, EMIC. Dot org. Go to the website, and you would click on Ministries, and here it comes. And then you, let me see if this will work for me tonight. We scroll up and find, wait, over here it is. Select a ministry, and we go to, we go somewhere. You, you, you go down, you go to Believers Institute, and you'll find the notes right there. And you can get all these, all these downloads and all these notes 
on uh, how you can get this. And the confession of the wisdom of God is available to you right there. And uh, you, this is probably something you need to get on here and explore a little better than I did with my fingers trying to scroll through that and get the wisdom of God principal thing for this year. You'll have these notes. Keep that confession before you. Pray it over yourself and get it, get it, uh, get it in your spirit and get it ready to go. Amen. All right. Several things are coming up. You heard that this coming Sunday, Brother Dr. Jerry Savell will be with us at 10 a.m. in the live service. I want to invite you to be part of that. You're going to want to be here and you're going to be want to tune in, have your Bible ready and your notepad ready because um, he's going to have a powerful word uh, for this year starting off as well uh, this this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Matter of fact, let me just give you a little roll in right here. Take one minute. We'll watch everywhere where Brother Copeland and the ministry is going to be somewhere near you. We'll be back in one minute. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. This is my preaching buddy for 50 years. 50 years. 50 years. Man, we must have started when we was three. (laughs) (laughs) And 2019 is going to be the the biggest year ever. We're a team again. We're going to preach together all year long, 2019. And if you miss it, it's your fault. (laughs) We want want you to be there. April 4th through 6th, Kenneth Copeland welcomes you to the 2019 Branson Victory Campaign at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri, U.S. May 25th through June 4th, join Pastors George and Terry Pearsons for Kenneth Copeland Ministries' first ever Israel tour. June 6th through 8th, join Kenneth Copeland and Jerry Savell at the Sacramento Victory Campaign at the Calvary Christian Center in Sacramento, California, USA. July 22nd through 27th, attend Southwest Believers Convention at the Convention Center in Fort Worth, Texas, USA. For more information, go to kcm.org slash events. KCM.org slash events. That one's an easy one. KCM.org slash events will tell you all of those uh, meetings and how you can, how you can participate and be part of those. I mentioned that Jerry Savell will be here on the 13th, 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern, um, right here from Eagle Mountain International Church. And then Wednesday, the 16th will be Mark Hankins will be here. And, and if you can get here, that's one of those ones you definitely will want to, want to be here. And then going a little further out, on February the 10th, Rick and Denise Renner will be here um, as well. Kenneth Couple of Bible College is up and running. Classes begin for second semester next week, but it is not too early or too late for you to sign up for next year. KCBibleCollege.org. KCBibleCollege.org. Get the information. Uh, it doesn't hurt you to get the information. That's free. And then figure it out and listen to the Holy Spirit. Get the wisdom of God. Get your notes out. Pray over that again. And I want to see you here next year as uh, we're starting up the second year of Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Let me out- tell you about one more thing. This coming May, it's time to go to Israel in the spirit of faith. You've been before. Great, come back with us. You'll see things you didn't see the first time. If you've never been, now's the time. You've always had that little stirring in your spirit that you want to do this thing. There are a few seats left for you to tour Israel in the spirit of faith with Pastor George and Terry. I'm going to be there. My wife, Michelle, will be there. Uh, Julie Cerrone, who you've seen here before, and a very special surprise, Chris Twin from Australia will be with us as well. You want to go to Israel with us uh, May the 25th through June the 4th. One of the easiest ways you can do it is go to the website, emic.org. When you see the little banner that comes up with Pastor George and Terry about Israel, click on that, fill out the form, and you're getting all registered and ready to go. And uh, we want to see you this year in Israel. I said it last year all the time, next year in Israel. Well, this year in Jerusalem. So May the 25th through June the 4th, kcbiblecollege.org is where you find out about the Bible school so that you can get here and uh, uh, kcm.org slash events is all the events and the places that uh, the ministry is going to be where, near you. Okay. All right. That's the things coming up. Don't forget this Sunday, Faith Foundation's 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Dr. Jerry Savell will be here, and uh, it is going to be a great time in the Lord, and we will see you again then. Father, we bless our partners. I thank you that the wisdom of God is in them, the mind of Christ is in them, and they're growing in, in, in they're growing spiritually in stature every single day. And they're healed and whole in Jesus' mighty name. God loves you. I love you. And know this, that Jesus is Lord. See you Sunday.